905. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He that believeth on the Son has everlasting life. He that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. And neither is there salvation in any other. For there is no other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. And another must in the Bible are the words of Jesus Christ that ye must be born again. And the problem is, oh, the great news of a baby has been born. The wonderful news, a healthy baby has come into the world. And it is good news. It is joyful news for a new mother and a new father that a child has been born. And yet we look upon that child, we look on the aspect that child has been born into Adam. That child has been born of Adam. That child has been born into sin, carried on from the mother and from the father. And the Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And the very fact is that being born of a woman, you are now classified in the Bible as a sinner. And if by chance you are a product of science of a test tube baby, it is still the egg of a woman and the fertilization of a male that produces a child and that still is of Adam and of Adam's race. And of Adam's race, you are a sinner. Sinners do not go to heaven. Sinners go to hell. And the love of God is He knows that in our sin, He knows the destitute destination. And yet the Bible says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God saw man going to the devil's hell. For Jesus said that hell was created. And yes, Jesus spoke about H-E-L-L. -L. Matter of fact, Jesus spoke more about hell than he did about heaven. And Jesus said hell was created for Satan and his angels. And there are men who are willing, who are able, who want to go the way of Satan. And they will go, what the Bible says, the broad way. And the broad way leads to destruction. John the Baptist tells us without Jesus Christ, it's the wrath of God. The wrath of God is hell. All is not well. There is a hell. And if you find it hard to believe, why does man in his mouth say, go to hell when they get angry with you? Because the anger and wrath of God upon a sinner is hell. Now, let's look at the fact about sinning in hell. The Bible says, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There is none righteous, no, not one. So that eliminates all of us here at the earshot of the preacher. There is no one that has not ever sinned. We were born into our sin. And as little children growing up at various types of ages, we have sinned the sin of the Ten Commandments. We have not honored our mother and father growing up. We have yelled back. 
We have cursed them crying upon our beds after being righteously punished by them. We have dishonored their name. We have dishonored their conduct. And yet, one of the Ten Commandments is, Thou shalt honor thy father and mother. And when you have not, any time in your life, when you have not honored your parents, you are now a sinner. I had upon me the sin of not honoring my parents. to a child that would not listen and not hear. Today, a child who has not respected their parents is able to come to the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. We sin. And yet God in His love has provided a remedy. God has prescribed to us for our sins that is terminal because the wages of sin is death. He provides us the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. There is no other sin cleansing. For the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Any man's a sinner. You're not going to come to God by religion. You're not going to go through the back door to God into heaven by what you do. For there is none that doeth good, no, not one. God's remedy, God's prescription for your terminal cause called sin is Jesus Christ. And from the very infancy of you and I growing up as a child, we violated honor thy mother and father. And that's not one of the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not. It's honor thy father and mother, and when you have not, it's a sin to, uh, to dishonor your parents. And when you have sinned against your parents, you have sinned against God. Glory, hallelujah, you're now a sinner. You have been born of Adam in sin. Now you have demonstrated what you are, a sinner. You know, a doctor will demonstrate what he is by doing doctoring. A fireman will demonstrate his skills by putting a fire out. And by disobeying your parents, you have showed you to be a sinner. And God doesn't care if you have rotten, terrible, wicked, ungodly, the most horrible parents in the world. Did you dishonor them? If you dishonored whoever your parents were, whatever your parents were, However your parents were, you are a sinner, and you are now charged with sin. God will deal with your parents on how and what they were, but what about you, the sinner? And maybe rightfully you say, preacher, that's in the Old Testament. And yet, when Paul wrote his epistles, I believe to the Ephesus church, the book of Ephesians. He says something quite remarkable. He says, children, obey your parents in all things. The Ten Commandments of honor thy mother and father. 
are found in the New Testament writings by Paul. So, you can't say, oh, that's the law, and get away free. I look around in America, and I see terrible amounts, a broad amount of Americans in their youth violating honor thy father and mother. And it's a sin. And you meant what about the heathen? What about you have just heard? Let God deal with the heathen. Let God deal with you. Right now you have heard the charge of disobeying your parents is a sin. And all children have done that. And the Bible says all have sinned. I mean, we can go into a dishonor your parents to another sin of the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not bear false witness. And when your mother has asked you, did you take the cookie? And you lied to your mother. You have committed false witness and that's another commandment broken by you. In your youth. Because disobeying parents and lying, especially lying to your parents, that's disobeying your parents. That's not honoring them. And now you're a sinner. Sinners do not go to heaven. For God said, Be holy, for I am holy. And when you stand before God lying about a cookie, you stand before the God that cannot, will not, is unable ever to tell a lie. So you are unlike God. Because you have lied about a cookie, you have lied about money, you have lied about a broken lamp, you have lied to your parents, and God is unable, and will not, and cannot lie. You are a sinner. And as a result of your sin, God has sent forth the Lamb of God, which take away the hey, sin of the world. Good to see you guys. You can have your sins dealt with. You can have your sins cleansed by Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. Thank you. And when you are cleansed by Jesus Christ, you are washed. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thy heart I change, I change. that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And I think I miss. I had one verse in my mouth and another one in my mind. Forgive me, old age. The verse I wanted to say was, If thou shalt confess thy sins, He is able, God is able, to wash and cleanse us of our sins. There's only one washing of sins in the Bible. And that is through the blood of Jesus Christ. God manifested in the flesh. Adult, child, we are sinners from childhood. Childhood. Childhood's when you got more than one child. If Webster can do it, I can do it. But whoever thought that you are there wiping your hiney after being whipped and you wish God would put punishment upon your parents. Oh, oh I'm going to run away. I, they don't love me no more. My parents are wicked. You are disobeying God. You are disobeying the Ten Commandments. You are disobeying Paul's writing to the church. You are a sinner. 
child. Grown-up child. I had a man tell me, well, he was never my father. I don't care. He's your father. Whether he's there or not. And I'm sorry if you had not had a right father. I am sorry that you did not have a good mother. But that's not the excuse for sin. There is no excuse for sin. They are your parents. Whether they are there or not. God will deal with them as their sins. But for you. For you. All has sinned. And I don't need to look at you 20 years old. I don't need to see you in your 40s and 50s to say, you sin. I can look at you growing up in childhood. Sinning by sinning against your parents. Which is a sin. Your prayers are working. He's having all kinds of problems. And when we sin against mom, and when we sin against dad, we sin against a holy, righteous God. And you need to repent, and you need and must believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. You must be born again because you were born wrong. Your first birth was disgusting, bloody, and they call it afterbirth. Your new birth in Christ upon the gospel that Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures and was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. That new birth is a wonderful, clean, excellent birth. It changes you. It makes you a new creature. It makes you a new man. It puts your name in the Lamb's book of life forever. It will get you into heaven where you were not able to get to heaven by being the old man, by being a son of Adam and not a son of God. And you need to look back. Oh, I've never sinned, preacher. You sinned against your mom and you sinned against your dad. Whether it be your biological parents or step-parents or that wonderful aunt that took you in. Parental authority. And that is the sin of America today. The parental authority against our parents. Oh, the sin. And I'm not getting into the big, nasty, wonderful, excellent sin. I mean, I could talk about child pornography, I could talk about all that, but let's get into you as a child. Before you get into child pornography, you get into a child not respecting his parents that God gave you. And you can blame the public school system of the United States of America, I hate. Because they teach you, you didn't come from a mother and father. You came from apes. You came from scum in a pond. You came from a great big bang. I tell you, you were created by a God that gave you parents. And he has said in both testaments, obey your parents. And if you don't, it's a sin. Put that on the board of education. God, don't bless America. It does not want you. It does not want the Word of God. If it can spend the money to try to block out the preaching, don't bless America. But those that will come to Jesus Christ for salvation. It's a terrible thing when a child suspects his parents. It will be a more terrible thing when that child is cast off in the lake of fire that burneth forever and has rejected the sin offering of Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son 
that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but shall have everlasting life. Did you do your parents harm? Did you make your mama cry? Have you upset your father? You have sinned. And down south, maybe we gone too far south. I think we did. But I know north-south, I guarantee there are homes. And maybe the home of your mother, when she gets up every morning, she will read the scriptures. And she'll get on her knees. And she'll pray for her little darling that may be here right now. And in tears, she will pray to her God, her Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord God, will you get that child right? Will you reach that little boy? Will you reach that little girl? Lord God, will you save their souls by Jesus? And you may be walking right now and tripping and doing your mother harm by her tears to God because you won't obey God. That's a sin. That is a sin. Sinners that have not believed on the Lord Jesus Christ go to hell forever. Because you have not taken your sins against your parents and put them upon the blood and the work of the merit of Jesus Christ. All oh, the great things that God can do. In 1987, I received the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior. And in 2009, I learned that my own mother had received Christ as her Savior. Everything I've done against her and everything she's done against me has been washed in the blood. Forever. It's a wonderful thing to say, Mom, Dad, I have received Jesus. I have done these things wrong against you. Will you forgive me? They may not forgive you. But guess what? If you ask Jesus Christ to save your soul, if you ask Jesus Christ to, to wash your sins, if your parents haven't forgive you, God will. And God will forgive you only by Jesus Christ. Listen, we're talking about one sin that everybody... There's no perfect child. That perfect child died upon Calvary's hill. That perfect child suffered and died according to the scriptures. That ain't you. You must come to that perfect child as the imperfect child and ask that perfect child, Jesus, to wash away your sins to be saved. That little baby grew up and suffered and died upon Calvary's hill. And you have sinned against your parents. You have sinned against God. You want me, oh, Oh, preacher, mention the big, horrible sins worthy of prison. The visible, horrible sins against parents. And I said in the Old Testament, Christ, yes, this is my son. Yes, he don't listen to me. He's a glutton. He has just defiled his mother and father. All right, let's get the rocks. That's on the Old Testament. For you who want to be under the Old Testament. Oh, we meet on Saturday. <laughs> we don't eat pork. <laughs> Do you strike a fire on your stove? You are to be killed. Old Testament. Thou shalt not kindle a fire on my Sabbath. How about that? You're guilty. You seven-day Adventists that strike a stove on Saturday, you are guilty of death. Unless you repent. And believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. But children, 
I was a child once. If my mom got any gray hairs, it's because of me. I guarantee my mom had many a tears watching her little boy grow up. And I caused them. And in 1987, April, on a Saturday afternoon, all them sins were washed away. They were washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. And I wrote a letter to my dad. And I said, Dad, I have done X amount of things to you. If there's any way to repay, if there's any way to get right, I am a Christian today. I have been washed in the blood of Jesus. But I need to talk to you. I need to deal with you. And see, when you repent and ask Jesus to save you, amen, glory to God. But restitution. And not only did God the Father forgive me of my sins, my worldly father said, oh, that's okay. There's nothing more pleasurable than have God cleanse you. And for your parents to say, okay, I forgive you. And there's nothing more exciting to hear that one of your parents are saved. And the other one you keep praying. And I've heard the sins of my dad growing up. And he, without the blood of Jesus, is guilty of dishonoring his parents. We can talk about that one sin that we've all done. We have sinned against our mother and father. That makes you a sinner. You don't take a blue pill. You don't lay on a couch. You don't drink it away. You don't smoke dope. You put your faith and belief in those sins in the blood of Jesus Christ. And if you are able, write or talk to that parent and say, Hey, I'm saved now. What can I do to make it right? And if they don't forgive you, they should, but they don't. Jesus Christ is able to forgive you. Jesus Christ is able to wash away those sins. And you're able to say, hey, I couldn't get it right with my parents, but I got it right with my Creator. The sin of America is you came from apes. They don't want the Bible because the Bible says you were made by a Creator. And that Creator is the God that will charge you with the sin of disobeying your parents. And that's the subject today is we have all disobeyed our parents, but not all of us are washed from that sin. And a doctor can't do it. Only the blood of Jesus Christ, only God manifested in the flesh the, the gospel that Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures and was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. Children, when you sin against your parents, you sin against God. And you need Jesus Christ to cleanse you. And if your parents paddle be your behind, you better love them more. You better thank God you got a parent that loves you. The Bible says if you love your parent, I mean if your parent loves the child, they'll beat you. There is no love if you don't punish your children. I think a lot of the things that stopped me from being a wicked sinner is a mother that loved me upon my behind. Oh, no. 
I went through more yards than your NFL. My mom said I will provide the rod of correction of the yardstick upon your hiney. And let me tell you, a godly mother that was lost back then prevented me to do a lot that I wanted to do. And I sinned against her because I did not honor her. And I sinned against God. But April 21st, 1987, I got it all settled by God. I came to Calvary. I met knelt down at that cross and I asked Jesus Christ to save my soul. I asked for the blood of Jesus to cleanse my sin and he washed me clean. And I have been clean and I have been settled where I go if I were to die today. I don't know how terrible a person you are. I don't know how wonderful a person you are. But if you sin against your parents, you're that sinner that Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures. And was buried. And arose again the third day. You are that sinner. And you may have forgotten I guarantee you, a healthy mother has not forgotten. I guarantee there are times when she's alone, she remembers the sins of her children. And I believe if you're not under the blood of Jesus Christ, God will remember them sins also. There's somewhere once it says, I, I don't know, but uh, you better be good, you better be bad, you know, something like that. He's making a list and checking it twice. According to Revelation 20, God is going to open the books and everything you have done. Time, date, and hour has been recorded. And I only, I have only touched the sins of you as a child to your parents. I haven't talked about that first beer. I haven't talked about that first cigarette. I haven't talked about uh, the sins of looking upon a woman to lust after in his heart. That's adultery. I haven't got into those. I'm looking at the sin of what you do to your mom and dad. The very sin that we are born of is born of Adam. That's natural. We can change, we can direct our heritage to two men, Noah and Adam. And both the Bible said sin. One ate a fruit that he wasn't supposed to, one got drunk. <laughs> And I can go into a whole Bible thing there, but I won't. It doesn't deal with the gospel, but... Hey, if you want Bible messages like that, well, you can come to us. We have Wednesday night Bible. Wednesday Bible. But being born into sin by Adam and our disrespecting our parents, we put sin into action. We make sin a verb. You know what a verb is? Oh, wait a minute. No, we're in a modern public school system. So you may not know what a verb is. Hold on. I bet you know what tweak is and all that other nonsense. But a verb is a word that shows action. Run is a verb. Riding a bike is a verb. Walking is a verb. Sinning is a verb. Sinner is a noun. You are a sinner that sins. That's a complete sentence. And that sentence against God will put you into hell.
That's a place. Proper noun. I'm sorry to give you a school lesson on Saturday, but a lot of you need it. <laughs> Listen, if you can't if you can't respect your parents, you're not going to respect the preacher and trying to shut him up. Somebody here did not respect his parents because he can't respect grown-ups. That's a sin. Disrespect is a sin and makes you a sinner. And which you sin by disrespecting. And it starts off with your parents. And when you are a child that has sinned against his parents or her parents, and if you do not come to Jesus for the cleansing power, if you do not come to the gospel, that Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures and was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. If you do not get cleansed of your childhood sin, you will spend eternity in hell. Not because you're a sinner. Because you have not had your sins cleansed by the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. You see, that one sin that puts you into hell is rejecting Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. And the Lamb of God has come because we are the sinners. That Lamb suffered and died because we sinned. And that Lamb came out of that empty tomb three days and three nights in victory to overcome the sins that the sinner does. And it's a wonderful, blessed thing that God is able and willing and long-suffering and to wash all our sins. It is a wonderful thing that God is willing to accept us through Jesus Christ, His blessed Son, the blessed hope, the glorious hope that you can access through God, through Jesus Christ alone. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the light. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. There's no religion or education that gets you to God. There are no sinners in heaven. They have been washed by the blood of Jesus Christ. They have been cleansed by the fulfillment, by the merit, by the gospel of Jesus Christ alone. It's that simple. So before you say, I'm good, how'd you treat your mother? I'm a Christian. How well did you do with your father? I'm going to heaven. Are you washed of the sins of dishonoring your parents? Men that are not washed in the blood of the Lamb, Jesus Christ, are sinners. And sinners do not appear before a holy and righteous God. Mistreat your parents and reject Jesus Christ. We'll give you a ticket to hell for all eternity. Put in your faith and trust in Jesus. We'll get your name in the last book of life forever. And then when you die, you'll be absent from the body. 
a present from the Lord. It's that simple. Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb, the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world? Are you the sinner that Jesus Christ suffered and died for it according to the scriptures? Remember that one sin against your parents, that one diso disobedience against mom and or dad makes you a sinner. And sinners must be cleansed by Jesus Christ. Sinners must receive the gospel and put their faith in trust upon Jesus Christ to be saved. If not, you're, you're an unsaved sinner. You are a lost sinner. Now listen, salvation does not stop you from sinning. But it changes your destination from hell to heaven by Jesus Christ alone. Glory to God in the highest that Jesus Christ is able to save. And he's able to save you today. You may not have a tomorrow. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. And if you never sinned, how well did you treat your parents? You didn't grow up so quick, did you? I didn't have to deal with the teenage, the young adult. I'll get you when you were a tiny twat. Well, how did you treat your parents? The Bible says, honor thy father and mother. And when you didn't honor them, you sinned, regardless of what kind of parents they were. If you did not honor them, you've sinned, and you've sinned against God. It's amazing how wonderful sin is. You think of the big, wonderful, great sin. And you don't think about the sin against your mother and the father. Those sins will get you into hell just as quick as any other pornography or unrighteousness. And except you be washed in the Lamb. Hey, brother. Yes. See that girl boy in charge of the market? What's that? The girl in charge of the market. I know. And she don't want to be seen by us, so. <laughs> I mean, let's look at your childhood. How'd you do? I didn't get into stealing. Every child steals. I can go another 45 minutes on stealing. I can go another 45 minutes of lying. If my body wasn't so weak and fail of great evolution that's happening in my body today, 
might be here much longer. Today? What about tomorrow? But, hey. what about I how you treated you. your parents? And your conduct against your parents? Hey. God is recording. God is. And I don't think he needs to check it twice to know you've been naughty or nice. The eyes of the Lord, let's go scripture. The eyes of the Lord in every place behold the evil and the good. To say naughty and nice in a nice little carol is Bible perversion. You notice how they have the naughty and nice and Proverbs says the evil and the good. All they did was light in the scriptures a little. Got to watch out for Satan. But the great wicked intimidator, Satan Claus, he rewards the evil and the good. Not God. If you are not washed in the blood of Jesus Christ, you go to hell. Whether you've been nice or good. So in the realm of sinnerhood, how was your childhood? Judgment's coming. Saved or lost. It'd be a horrible thing to have your mom and dad stand up before you at judgment and give God a testimony on how you treated them. Before God says, depart from me, ye sinner, ye workers of iniquity, I never knew you. So before you go off and declare your righteousness, the title of this message is today, Honor thy mother and father, and if you have not, you've sinned. And you are a sinner. And unwashed sinners go to hell. For some of us, them sins were long time ago. For me, in April 1987, they were washed. They were made clean. For many of you, they're still on the books. And for many of you that will go the broad way, they're going to remain on the books until you fall off into the lake of fire. It's that simple. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And when you're confessing your sin, remember the sins of your childhood. They're there. They're not there if you've been washed. They're there if you rejected Jesus. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And thou shalt be saved. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We have all mistreated our parents. All of them. You realize you don't have to do anything physical. You just need to think about it. Thinking can be a sin. It's a verb. Remember, verb shows action. I wish God would get my parents. I wish my parents would move away. I wish my parents would die. That's a sin. By the way, if you think if you wish your parents would die, you are now a murderer. How's that for a charge? Thou shalt not kill. If you think or speak your parents to be dead, you are a murderer. 
and murderers shall be put to death. Except for in America. They get hotel comfort. There's no hotel comfort with God. There's the gates of hell and they're closed behind you. Unless you repent and get right and be washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. Be leery of how much of a sinner you are. And look around America and England. What is the number one sin of our youth today? It ain't drugs. It ain't alcohol. It's disrespecting their parents and their elders. And internet. And disrespecting your parents and your elders in the Bible, it is a sin. And if you are not cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ, sinners go off into hell. Imagine God charging you for what you did to your parents. You imagine your mama wrapping her arms around you all happy because you made things right with her? Can you imagine God wrapping his arms around you because you received Christ as your Savior? Or you can, if you have not the Son, according to John the Baptist, he that has not the Son shall not see light, but the wrath of God. The wrath of God upon little boys who made their mamas cry. Little girls that upset their fathers. It's a sin. Honor thy mother and father. I'll give it to you in the Old Testament, I mean, New Testament. Children, obey your parents. To honor your mother and father, Paul says to obey your mother and your father. That's a great Bible definition. You say, well, how do I honor? You obey. And the youth today are not obeying. You know why they're not obeying? I can see it. Because the people in the Daytona Beach Farmer's Market are not obeying God, the Father. There's that little rebellion in all of us, isn't it? We rather serve Satan then turn to God. We rather have the blessings of God of fruit and vegetables than turn to the God of salvation. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Yeah, had me a woman.